President Obama says a late night meeting at the White House helped to narrow differences between Republicans and Democrats on federal spending cuts, but there is still no deal to stop a federal government shutdown tomorrow. My McGinnis is president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Three days ago, she told us she didn't think a shutdown was probable. Maya, what do you think now? I still think they're going to pull it off. <laughs> I'm not how, sure how why. How on earth are they going to pull it off? Who's going to give ground? Well, I think everybody's going to have to give a little bit of ground, and they're going to have to find a way to all go back to their various constituencies and save face. But we're really talking about such small differences here, and this is more about politics than it is the actual dollars in saving differences at this point. Uh, I think everybody needs to know we need to turn our attention and focus not on this year's budget. We're already halfway through this fiscal year, but next year's budget and the big fiscal problems beyond that. So they both will go back to their parties and explain why they did what they had to do. do at the very last minute, they may need another short-term extension. Um, I just don't think we're going to have a government shutdown because it plays so poorly for everybody involved if we do. Why should Americans think there is any hope of a long-term deal on next year's budget and beyond if we are at this stage a day before a government shutdown, whether it happens or not? Yeah, I have to agree with that, that this is not the model of either negotiating or cooperation that you really want to see working for uh, policymakers to come together and do what we have to do, which is put in place a long-term budget fix for the huge deficits and debt that are going to strangle the country uh, in the coming months and years if we don't make changes. But I will tell you that what's going on here on, on uh, the 2011 budget is also a lot of letting off steam, whereas what you see going up in the Senate is a very different different bird right now. You've got senators from both parties working together, talking about, is there a way you can take what the Fiscal Commission put out there, a bold proposal that looks at all parts of the budget, into legislation and have that be the starting point for discussions of how you have a bipartisan fix. So the cooperation that you see going on in the Senate, I think, is in stark contrast to what you see over, over the continuing resolution. And hopefully that's the model of not just negotiations, but discussion and cooperation and putting the overall good of the country in front of partisanship that we will switch to. Um, I will grant you that it seems like a tough change. It's very different than where we are now. But everybody has come to understand the stark threats that the deficits and the debt pose to the country. And I do believe that voters want to see a solution to this. But, but Maya, so though, they don't do, want to see a fiscal crisis. You know, do they recognize, though, the stark threats when you have House Republicans insisting that cuts be made to programs because, uh, you know, that, that cuts be made on the basis of ideology? Do they really get the urgency of needing to cut the deficit for fiscal reasons, for the sake of our boring ability in international debt markets. You know, I think that, that the awareness of that problem has grown immensely over the past years. And unfortunately, what we've seen going on in Europe, which for a long time seemed completely different, much like in years past when other countries in South America, Central America, went through debt crises, well, it could never happen here, was the general feeling. But as you've seen what's gone on in Europe, and you look at the debt statistics, you start to realize the U.S. isn't necessarily that different, certainly not indefinitely. And while we still benefit from being the safe haven and dollars come here and we can borrow more cheaply, that will not last forever if credit markets lose faith in our ability to get our fiscal situation under control. That means our policies and also getting our politics right so we fix this. I do think there's an enhanced awareness of that. There are questions all the time about what would a fiscal crisis look like? What would bring it on? When might it happen? And you can see that more and more attention is being focused to the need to get a plan in place before credit markets force but, us to, because if we wait that long, it will be much, much worse. Okay, if that is the case, why, why is there no bipartisan consensus on just cutting spending and not focusing on the nitty gritty? If, if the kinds of negotiations that are going to play out next year, if, if we're getting a preview right now of the kinds of negotiations that are going to play out once this resolution issue is dealt with, uh, how can you possibly, how can anyone possibly be optimistic? Well, here's the positive scenario I, I am hoping that this is, which is this is both sides putting out their opening bid and saying, we don't want to give, we care so much about these kinds of spending cuts or we care so much about protecting these kinds of things. And then after they can go back to both the extremes of their party and voters who don't want them to give up some of their core values, they can say we push so hard and now we have a bigger situation that we have to come together and cooperate on. 
Uh, it, it means that you haven't folded too quickly. I hope that's what's going on. If this is really a sign that people are going to put politics in front of the good of the country, try to get through an election before anything happens, uh, and continue to not compromise, we will all pay a huge price for it. And I just know from people who I work with up on the Hill, they are too aware of this problem and too serious about uh, moving forward with some kind of compromise. They don't see eye to eye on what it should be, but they know we have to put something in place, that there is growing momentum for that kind of support. We saw in the Senate, 64 senators signed a letter to the president saying we support what these six senators in the Senate who are working on really hashing out a compromise, we support what they're doing. We support a comprehensive plan. That means everything's on the table. Let's talk about how to do this in a way that's bipartisan, gets everybody to the table. And I'm hopeful. And what I've seen is that that kind of attitude is spreading, even with the backdrop of what's going on in the CR. But honestly, that's a much smaller issue than the move towards cooperating on a bigger fiscal fix. Well, Maya, we would all love to share your optimism, and we hope there is reason <laughs> yeah. for it. Maya, thanks very much. Maya McGinnis, president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget.